got caught up with the team and then got caught up out there for a second. So I'm sorry, I was trying to get here as quick as I could. Um, you know, I, I didn't think we played great tonight. It was just kind of one of those nights. It felt like there was a lid on it from the start of the game. I mean, we had, God, I, go, we're about to go grade the tape here in a second, but it felt like how many layups are you going to miss? Or how many times are you going to get it to two feet and get it stripped? You know, how many times are you going to have a silly turnover? You know, and uh, give give Bryant credit. I mean, they beat Florida. They beat a really – I mean, they beat a top 25 team on the road kind of doing that. And that when they beat Florida Atlantic three weeks ago or so. So they, they do frustrate you and they do some different things, right? They play five guards. Um, you know, they most everybody on the floor shoots the basketball first. And the guys that don't are really good off the bounce from the perimeter. You know, Timberlake's an interesting matchup because – you know, he's like the one guy on the court that doesn't shoot it most of the time, but he's a terrific passer and playmaker, and he's really good at finishing around the basket. And, you know, we saw him at Memphis. So, it's you know, obviously he's had success in the American and at a high level, and he's an interesting matchup for our front court, or any, any high major front court for that, for that matter. Uh, but at the same time, I thought we had plenty of chances there early and it just felt like one of those nights where nothing was going our way. And I didn't think we handled that very well. And then I thought we handled it much better in the second half. And it wasn't like we came out of halftime and it just all went our way. But I thought we had a better attitude and approach. And then eventually you kind of find a way to, to bust the game open. But uh, I was not pleased with our play. I'll be honest, we're pretty hungover from Saturday. We're, this group's pissed. You know, obviously I'm pissed. And uh, – you know, you take those kind of losses hard. We take them all hard as coaches. This group took that loss harder than any any team I've had take a loss since I've been here. Uh, they're pissed. And they practiced their – we had one of our best practices of the year yesterday. I thought we'd come out and play unbelievable today. They're pissed off. But I think we addressed some things from that game and it had us a little gun shy or maybe not as confident tonight. And I think big picture, that's good because some of those things needed to be addressed. But we hadn't quite – gotten through that process yet to get confident again and I think we can we got to get confident again um but they were pissed and, and deep down I like that about this team because I'm pissed too I, I'm not gonna lie to you and uh I didn't think we played great tonight but I was I was pleased with how we handled things in the second half so you, you think the hangover thing there there is something to that of maybe even especially with a short turnaround where you don't have as much time to to get it out of your system before you're back out there yeah I mean I Again, that they've their mood's not been good, not in a negative way, like in the kind of way you want as a coach. Like I'm like asking the assistants the last couple of days, uh, you know, they don't seem like themselves, you know, and they're like, well, they're pissed off about the game and how they played. And well, good, I am too. I mean, that's what I said to them because shoot, I'm pissed too. I ain't myself either, you know. And then we practiced yesterday, and I was really curious to see how they'd handle practice because we had a really hard film session two hours plus um on sunday and they practiced their brains out guys it's probably the best practice we've had since i've been the coach here in terms of just effort we went for two hours and 20 minutes the day before a game you know and i i again i thought we if you were just going off of practice I thought we played great tonight i thought we came out with the intention to and then it just didn't happen for us and then we got down and so um, again, not not pleased with our play tonight. Glad we found a way. You know, it is a process, and this this team's got a chance to be a really good team. I'm I'm really like co I'm having fun coaching this team, even if I'm not having fun this week. Uh, but we need a day off. We'll t take that tomorrow, and then we get a chance against a big time team. You know, on Saturday, like we get it, we get a chance to to compete against a big time team, a, a team that's going to play in the NCAA tournament. You know, a team that's one of the best teams in college basketball, top 30, 40 team in college basketball, no matter how you look at it. So uh, Saturday's a big opportunity for us, and I think these these guys will be excited for that. Coach Aziz has uh, four blocks, season high, 23.9 defensive rating with him on the floor. Is this is this the kind of defensive impact that you foresaw him having on this kind of on this roster? Yes. Yes, and I, I, I think, you know, sometimes you got to put, you know, his development in perspective this time last year was the first time he had ever had success at a high level at any level of basketball on a basketball court you know like you know this time last year he was actually having some games at utah valley because the year before he was at akron he didn't play 
he wasn't even getting in the games. You know, so his development is still early and new. And one of the things that I don't think he's ever been asked to do is guard anything but a center, right? So he's, he's, he's gotten pretty good at guarding the center. You know, but now we're asking him to get out on the floor in a game like tonight and guard perimeter-oriented players. I mean, Timberlake played the three at, at Memphis, guys. You know, um, and so he's got all the ability to do that, but he's learning it for the first time. Like, that's pretty fun as a coach to see a guy develop in front of you. Like, in the Howard game, he was lost trying to do that. Tonight, he finally had some really good moments there in the second half, and that's what's neat when you're working with young people is, like, you can see them – improving right in front of your eyes over a really short period of time and you know we're seeing that with some of our young young players and I do think of his ease in the basketball terms as a young player but yeah I, I still think he can play significantly better and you look down he's got 17 rebounds so yeah that that he's having an impact and he's, he's a big time player. CJ said your message at the halftime was just to respond to the to the chaotic nature of the game what does it say that they're able to respond and practice this week and then have that rough first half, and then when called upon, they can do the same thing. Today. Yeah, I, I spent halftime just talking about team. And, and, and he's right. We talk about responding every day. It's one of the four things I have on my wrist right here is how we respond. And then I, But I, the part of that was we had to start thinking about our team. You know, like we have a lot of talent in that locker room and a lot of guys that are about the right stuff. But every night's not going to be everybody's night. And you could see the frustration with certain guys and how they were playing or how the game was going and – it was, it was, again, it wasn't the most fun game to coach because I didn't think we played great. It probably wasn't the most fun game for our fans to watch. But it's important for our team to continue to find ways to grow. And I think it was tonight to, to see we got to be a team first all the time. We can't ever get caught up in what's going on with ourselves. And that was, that was the message at halftime more than anything. I didn't think it was about X and O's and adjustments, that's for sure. Coach, it seemed like Aziz really got going in a one big – lineup in that second half was that more due to the matchups or just something you wanted to see if uh, Aziz could handle on his own well I think a couple things um I think it allowed him to kind of guard a non-shooting player you know when he had to guard Withers in the first half it was presenting some problems um or anybody had you know even Vic guarding Withers was presenting some problems I think number seven's Withers and that that was a matchup we were struggling with a little bit with those two guys. And, again, I, th I, I believe those two are good enough to do that. But it wasn't just him. It's the Timberlake nature and all that. I mean, all that together. Uh, but So I think getting him on, you know, the right guy there. And then at the end of the game, they're a little tired and worn down because we're able to sub and play multiple guys, and they're, they're not doing that to the same extent. So now all of a sudden we're in spread action late with one big who's putting a lot of pressure on the rim and CJ and CMOS are both out there spacing the floor. And so I do think some things opened up. It's, it's always a, it's usually people when they write stories, or whatever you want it to be one reason, but it's usually a handful of things culminating and, you know, probably the right matchup defensively helped disease, probably having a lot of spacing on the floor. Maybe Bryant's a little worn down and they're not covering as much ground. I think all that stuff probably impacted that, that run. I think it was a 30-5 to five run at the end of the game. Are, are teams going to continue to foul him, do you think, and send him to the line rather than submit to the dunk? I mean, if he's 8-12 to 12 from the free throw line every night, they're not. You know, and he, he's actually got great touch. His, his form is, is a little non-traditional, but he's a good shooter. Uh, I, he actually can shoot threes a little bit. I mean, I, I'm, you know, you guys, you didn't believe me when I said about Vic, and I think everybody believes me now, although he didn't shoot it very good on Saturday. But, uh, but it, his ease can shoot it. He's got great touch. I don't worry about him at all on the free throw line. He's going to make a lot of foul shots. You, you can see his misses are soft, and he's a good, he's a good shooter. He's going to be a three-point shooter here at some point. You guys shooting 37% from deep at home and 19% on the road. <laughs> is there any rhyme or reason of that? Is is there anything you're seeing in the tape that that's contributing to the splits like that, or is it just the, the shots? How many stop games balling? have we played at home? Six now. How many games we played on the road? Two. Well, when we get a bigger sample size, there might be more. That data might matter a little more. So I, yeah, I don't. I, we'll figure it out. But two, two, if we two games or two games, and we'll figure it out. This guy, this team's got the right stuff internally. This team will be good on the road. But we got to figure out how to do that. Saturday will be a test for us. CMOS 
shot three for five from the field tonight. Just talk about his performance tonight and how he rebounded from Saturday night versus Xavier and what you thought of his performance. He's such a good player uh, that hasn't been playing well. And I think I'm saying that because he would tell you that. You know, he's he hasn't found his groove yet. He got into the injury cycle. You know, it was like he had three injuries back to back to back, so he wasn't practicing. I'm not making excuses because he's capable of playing better. Uh, but I think he's he's trying hard to figure it out, and it was good to see him have a stretch there in the second half where he figured it out, you know, uh, to a certain extent. Uh, but he's a good player. He's going to have great games. He's going to have a great year. He hadn't kind of found his groove yet, and that's good for our team, right? You know, guys aren't playing their best basketball yet, and, you know, we're still doing some things. Class action lawsuit tomorrow in federal court. What is your understanding of the situation and – and what this potentially means for, for Jamil as, as far as the next steps. My understanding is that seven attorneys general filed a lawsuit uh, trying to get all the second time transfers clear based on the the rules kind of feeling. Um, I don't want to use the wrong language here, but the rules not being clear and confusing and all that kind of stuff. Um, I, I hate that it has to come to all this kind of, you know, I, who who wants it to get to this point? You know, I, I don't like that. Uh, my, my perspective is this, guys. Jamil Reynolds is sitting over there, and he, like I've said this all year, and he doesn't understand why he's not playing. And he's a really good player and a really good kid, and he hadn't done anything wrong. And so um, he's a guy that could be affected by this in some way. So I'm pulling for Jamil because he's my guy. And that That's the truth. I mean, I'm going to stand with my kids always. Um, and so I, I, from, from Jamil's perspective, I, I hate that it has to, I don't think it should have to come to this. I wish the NCAA would just clear him because he deserves to be cleared. And we still have not heard back on his, on his appeal. I mean, yeah, it's amazing, right? We're in December now. So I hope it doesn't I, – I don't believe it should have to come to all this. But uh, anything that would help Jamil get on the court, and help him get to a good place, I am all for that. Yeah, thanks. CJ, I know you're probably frustrated with, with the way things went Saturday. Was it important for you to get one to, to drop early and kind of clear your head? Uh, yeah, you know, I have the same preparation for every single game, um, going to every single game the same way. Um, obviously, it was disappointing to lose that game and frustrating. We all wanted that one, but it was, you know, in a 30-game season, you you got to quickly move on. And we had two days to get ready for, for Bryant. So um, like I said, just prepare the same for every game. There's been talk for years of shootout hangover. Did it feel like that maybe in the first half a little bit, trying to refocus? It looked sloppy kind of yeah you know um we knew coming in their style of play was a bit interesting um we like to get up and down and run and they play at a, a more kind of controlled pace and you know turnovers and sloppy play that's kind of just they just have a weird style so we knew going into the game that that kind of stuff was going to happen you just had to respond you just had to you know keep coming with the next play so at halftime you know we re, re, we regroup sorry and, uh, you know, I thought we did a much better job of just handling the chaotic nature of the game in the second half. Aziz, four blocks, 17 rebounds. Did you feel like you could kind of impose your will on the defensive end in this matchup tonight? Uh, yeah, yeah. I feel like I tried to do everything I can to try to respond. Like, like the first half wasn't really that good. So the second half, I tried to give everything I have for the team. So we got a better chance to win, yeah. How did the timing feel on those, those block chances throughout the night? I mean, I... I think it's, it's on my teammate. They just like finish the D and just let me go there, trying to like see if I can get it or not. Yeah. The Aziz, the lobs were going in the second half better than they have all season. Was there something that you guys were seeing that was leading to that, or did you guys just kind of wear Brian down to the point where you had open looks? Uh, I feel like everybody really knew, like, uh, no, like, yeah, that's what I do, and. Uh, and sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. And, and we're just trying to figure out. And we're on that pace. And I feel like it's going great right now, yeah. Do you think this – I don't know if they did this to you last year, but is the strategy a lot of times it just, well, we'll just foul him. 
Uh, but if you're going to make 8 out of 12 from the free throw line, that's maybe not a good strategy. Excuse, you said what? The, the strategy for the defense. So uh, when you go up for the lobs and all that, do, do you feel they're just they're, they're going to hack you, they're going to foul you? Yes, yes, yes. Aziz, talk about the second half adjustments there. Obviously, you had a big second half. You finished with 10 points, 10 rebounds, double-double alone in the second half. What was Bryant doing defensively that allowed you to get going there in the second half? Uh, like I said, we just respond, like play more together, like trying to like help each other on the side. And that's what we did for the second half to respond the right way. That's where we end up here winning, yeah. CJ, it seemed like Wes was really frustrated there at the half. What was his message to you guys in the locker room? You know, like I said before, uh, just responding to the chaotic nature of the game. Like I said, in the first half, you know, we kind of had bad body language on turnovers and just fell into their trap of making the game ugly. So, um, you know, that was a big emphasis going into the game is just responding the right way. Um, and I think in the first half, we weren't, we weren't responding to the way he would like. Was there an emphasis at all in getting to the rim? You guys shot 37 free throws tonight. Yeah, um, you know, we knew in, in their defense, in their ball screen coverage, we could get, or Day Day or whoever could get in the paint, and it was just about, you know, attacking, going through their chest, or, you know, seeing if the big comes up, the lob will be there. So it was just making the right reads and um, attacking, like you said, and got a lot of free throws out of it. When you see a team dropping back on offensive rebounds and really not sending anybody to the glass, eyes get big that you can put up a 17 rebound day yeah yeah like I say uh I'm just trying to like get as much as possible I can since like we get like a lot of backup like a big old sage and big like coming in so like I'm gonna try to get every everything I can so like as soon as I can like I'm tired or stuff like that they're just gonna get the next guy and we're gonna do the same thing every time CJ you haven't made a field goal outside of fifth third in the game this season how do you carry over this spark you got tonight and, and launch that into the Heritage Bank showdown on Saturday? Like I said, I just go in every single game with the same mindset, same preparation. So just continue to do what I do. Aziz, there's a, a hearing tomorrow and the possibility that Jamil could maybe be eligible if this restraining order is, is made. Um, do you have anything to say about Jamil and, and um, just your your thoughts on that whole process because you were in the same predicament. Yeah, yeah. I feel like he just like he 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 been working and I feel like he gotta keep doing it. Just like keep believing he's gonna be there and uh, and I feel like it's really hard for him. Like I know like I've been there and like we just support, give him our full support to be there like when the time comes so like he can he can ready to go. For both of you, will he help this team right away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like he's gonna help a lot since like he's he's a great post move and like and if he come back, we're gonna have like much power to like go to the offensive board and like running on the floor and yeah. Any more questions, guys? Last one. CJ, did it feel like you wore them down towards the end of the second half? I know they a little bit of a short bench, but did it feel like they kind of ran out of gas? Yeah, um, you know, in the first half we missed a lot of layups, open shots, um, and. We did get a lot of offensive rebounds in the first half. Um, and in the second half, you know, we were continuing to run. The lob was opening up. Uh, we were making the right reads. We were knocking down shots, you know, making those easy layups, converting on lobs, making free throws. Um, so just executing to a, a higher, um, just a higher, higher percentage in the second half. Perfect. Thanks, guys.